All right, we have reached that point in the week where we look at burbling popcorn and wish there was no butter, more butter on there. Uh, Chris <laughs> Evans, Melissa McCarthy, Brian Cranston, and Annette Benning all have new projects out to discuss in Real Talk, is in R E E L. Greg Russell is the man with all the information and interviews. Good morning. Good, Good to see morning. you. Great to see you as always. Let's start with Lightyear, the new Pixar movie that has Chris Evans taking over the voice of Buzz Lightyear. And I'm just going to tell you right out of the gate that, you know, ever since I was a kid, you know, like, so there'd be yeah. a movie, right? Right. And there would be the voice of the animated character in the mm -hmm. movie. Then they would turn it into a TV show and cheap mm -hmm. out and just get somebody else to do the. Right. That always bugged me so much <laughs> when I was a kid. Does it happen with this? It does. I mean, I'll just be straight out with it. You're so used to hearing Tim Allen's voice coming out of this character. Yes. That in the beginning, it's almost like, okay, you know, I mean, obviously everybody knows Chris Evans, but it's like, what does was he it? Try was to it sound money? like Tim Allen? No, no, he sounds Makes like sense. himself. Wow. I mean, you know, it's just regular. Chris Evans, right? Yeah. So that was kind of like the one thing uh, I saw it with a bunch of kids. The kids all enjoyed it. Their parents were saying we enjoyed it, but they missed the voice. All right, let's take a look at the clip. Look, feather, featherings, feather. It's a feather and impstance, sir. Look, rookie. First, you will not speak unless spoken to. Yes, sir. Still talking. Second, respect the suit. This suit means something. It's not just protecting your body, it's protecting the universe. This suit is a promise to the world that you and you alone will do one thing above all. Finish the mission, no matter the cost. You will never quit. Whatever the galaxy may throw your way, will you please turn that off? <laughs> it's just too easy. You're mocking me, aren't you? Okay, so obviously he's you know imitating Tim Allen there because mm -hmm. Tim Allen said you're mocking me, aren't you? In the original Toy Story, I'm sorry, I'm I'm completely taken out of it by the voice. Yeah, especially like you said for everybody who grew up, you know, and watched the originals. Mm -hmm. But now the little kids who it's made for, you know, they don't care no, who voices right, the they, had no they don't they don't know. Right, right. Unless you were like me, in which case you're like six <laughs> years old and you're like that's not Buzz Lightyear's voice. So how many real? It's not Mel Blanc. What the right, heck? Exactly. Uh, like we always talk about, it's a kid's four, because it is a kid's movie, mm -hmm. you know, and even the humor, you know, sometimes they'll throw in something for grown-ups. Wait, 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 is it a, now, we've talked about this before, but like Kixar, mm -hmm. Kixar, Pixar, <laughs> uh, Inside Out mm -hmm. destroyed me as an adult. I, I, you know, I was, the waterworks were going, the yeah. whole thing. Um, but you say this is a kid's movie. A kid's movie, movie. yeah, because I mean, it's all the humor's kid style. I mean, there's, so there's no like, like little sneak dies. in. It's not like up where right. the first 10 minutes of the movie, the wife dies and mm -hmm. no, nothing like that. Well, there's some things, but it's kind of like all natural. All right. So okay. nothing. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, next we have a new movie based on the real life story of a couple from Michigan. That's Jerry and Marge go large. I love this plot. It is so good. And like I said, based off of a true story about a Michigan couple near Battle Creek who the husband, Jerry, figured out how to manipulate the lottery. That is and they hilarious. Anyway, good. A ton of money. And yes, yeah, so we got to talk to Brian Cranston and Annette Benning about it, and here we go. After reading the script, I mean, this obviously almost sounds like something that someone would have just made up because it's just such a, that type of story. I couldn't imagine reading and finding out this was based off of a true thing that happened. Yes, yes. And, and you know, when I recount the story to, to friends and, and family of, of what was coming up, and I tell them the story, and I say, this is based on a true story, it, all of a sudden it elevates it. It's, it happened. It really happened? It's like, yep, it really happened. And there's just, you know, uh, it, it just feels more uh, authentic when you when you tell that story that that this really happened and it it enhanced their lives it enhanced the lives of people in everett michigan and um it it was it's just a feel-good story and uh that's what i wanted to do coming out of covid is to do something that made me feel good while shooting it and also then the end result it just lifts the spirit it's not going to solve any problems in our society but it's a wonderful little distraction and it is remarkable how Marge uh, leapt in because Marge is a, an extremely um, loving, organized woman who ran the household, who raised six kids and always supported Jerry in what he was doing. But this was a little bit out of their wheelhouse, right? I mean, they were doing something that was kind of wild. You know, they'd get in the truck and drive to, to Massachusetts. And this was every three weeks for 10 years. 
<laughs> I, just, I love the story, you know, I, and I remember it being a New England story, right. more so than a Michigan story. But the, the crazy thing is, is that we're the we're the lottery station, local four. There's like, yeah, we have a cage back here where they keep the balls, you know, and, the, and all that stuff. It's all locked up and it's very, very secretive and, and right. hush. The fact that they figured out a way to game the system. I mean, it was legal, too. Yeah, it was a deal where. The more tickets you buy, the better your chances are of winning. Yeah. Because somebody, you know, you buy Somebody's a thousand tickets, win. right? There's got to be a winner in there somehow. So it's good. Yeah. How many real? Oh, definite four for this one. And Come also, on. like I said, don't hedge. Is it a four and a half? Okay, we'll make it a four and a half. Yeah. It deals with Michigan. Why not? <laughs> okay. There you go. And also, Kellogg's is featured in it. So, <laughs> you know, there was a movie called The House, and there's another movie called Lucky Numbers. I could go on. Now to a new series on Netflix uh, that stars the hilarious couple, um, uh, Melissa McCarthy and ben, ben Falcone. It's called God's Favorite Idiots. You have an interview? Yes, I do. Let's look at that. <laughs> when I first saw the title of this show, I'm thinking, somebody's finally doing something about people I know. Uh, <laughs> but but it, it's a whole interesting concept. Now, Ben, I know you came up with this. Where did it all come from? Well, you know, I wrote a book about it in my 20s uh, with the same title. It, it didn't share a lot of uh, characteristics with the show, but it was always an idea that featured a character who was, you know, sort of chosen by God, an unlikely person to be chosen. And I was talking to Melissa about it three years ago, right? Mm -hmm. And you said, I always loved it. I always loved the concept of if if God were to choose somebody, would it be somebody spectacular? And the, the idea of that, no, it would probably be just an incredibly kind kind of like understated person. And I said, isn't that interesting? Because then if you would tell someone I've been chosen by God, who would believe you? Right. And right there, it's like, there's conflict and comedy just built into every, every kind of, every way you can slice that it's, it's in there. It's built into the recipe. It's one of those where it's a comedy, but yeah, you watch it and it does kind of like open your eyes on a lot of different things. It's it does. And I also love what there's so much there's so much negativity in the world that we just we're always just trying to to put a little more comedy. And I think with what Ben wrote with this one, especially it's it's always good when you can laugh and also take take a look and be like, I love the concept when God says in this that, you know, everybody's for the most part, everybody's right and everybody's wrong. So just, you know. If, if we could just all kind yeah. of agree to that, yeah. boy, be we're... respectful and don't, you know, do no harm. I think it's do no of harm. Great... Yeah. All right. What did you think about this? It, it's one of those where it, by being a series, there's some episodes that are good, some that are just, you mm -hmm. know, kind of low. So it's almost like a somewhat a hit or miss, but, you know, it's them and they're funny. All right. Well, we're into overtime, so you got to oh. run. Greg, thank you very much. Good to see you. Always a pleasure. Where can people see more of your interviews? Movieshowplus.com. Go there. You can check them all out.